tonight, so instead we're going to give this to our friend Steve Carell. Look at his stupid face. <laughs> Couldn't actually win one of his own, so he stole someone else's. <laughs> Our next presenters are two of the funniest people in America. She stole the show on Saturday Night Live, then went on to create, write, and star in her own show, 30 Rock. He was a jobbing actor, career not going that well, if I'm being totally honest, who... <laughs> who got his big break when I cast him in a remake of a show that I created called The Office. He's now leaving that show and killing a cash cow for both of us. Please welcome the wonderful Tina Fey and the ungrateful Steve Carell! Never gets old. <laughs> Steve Corral is considered handsome. <laughs> think, think of that. It's uh, amazing. Rain Wilson. <laughs> you probably know me as the creator of The Office. <laughs> no, you don't, do you? You think Steve Corral did it all? Oh, he's brilliant, isn't he, Steve Corral? <laughs> he's amazing as the bumbling office manager. Where does he get his ideas from? <laughs> Let's pay. Idiotic thing to say. With six billion people on the planet, how are they all going to love one person? A lot of them do. I mean, it looks like the American said. version of The Office. Yeah, Every you week, look at it. What is it, 10 million viewers, I guess? 10 million people. Watching him. Tune in and see my name at the end of the credits. They watch it for him, though, don't they? Not really, no, because it wouldn't exist without me, and he wouldn't exist without it. Where is he? Oh, there, in the front row. Just... <laughs> Just in case you have to make a dash for it. <laughs> have you got it on you? I've heard you carry it around with you to get in restaurants and stuff. I made you... Don't look at... I'm gone off-road. Everyone's getting nervous now. There's nothing on the auto queue. I could do anything. This is live. I made you what you are, and I get nothing back. <laughs> Have you even been to see Ghost Town yet? No. I sat through Evan Almighty. Give me my Emmy. <laughs> Give me my Emmy. I'll come down there. <laughs> <laughs> Give me it. I'll tickle you. I don't care. I've got nothing to lose here. I'm a nobody here. Where is it? <laughs> yes, you have. Stop. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. Give me it. Give me the Emmy. <laughs> Give me the Emmy. <laughs> Give me the Emmy. <laughs> Give me it. <laughs> Give me the... Thank you. <laughs> Right. Good. That's settled. Could you do what Ricky does? Oh, not in a million years. Why? No. Um, I think I would just get too skittish. Mm -hmm. I, but you I could am... play a Ricky Gervais character. Perhaps, but, but to actually go in front of people and... And offend I, them to their faces. I don't think I, I necessarily... It doesn't mean that I'm a better person. It just <laughs> means that I certainly don't have that kind of uh, guts. He... It's funny, he always makes fun of me, mm. always. Um, and he, he's, he's also, you know, per, in a personal way, been very, very sweet to me. Mm. Like, before one of these award shows, he pulled me aside and said, hey, I've got a few things that I wanted to mm. go after you with. Is that okay? And I'm like, of course. And so he's, there is a side, there is a, a gentler side to him that people don't necessarily so see. So you're, wow. all, you're all hearts, aren't that's you? That's right. No, that's lovely. He's yeah. such a lovely man, though. But he uh, thinks you're sweet because, just to clarify, you go up to him before an award ceremony and say, I'm going to call you a prick in a minute, just well, to no. warn you. But if uh, I told him what I was going to say, you know, if I had access to them, I'd warn everyone. You know, as I say, I don't <laughs> want to have a bad day. You know, it's, no, it's not, I, I've got nothing against people. Do you, you like know? Steve Carell? He's great. He's fantastic. Um, 
He's good, because you know why? He's got, he's nearly handsome. <laughs> he's got that. He's, he's got, he's, he's, he's like Bob Hope. If you look at him, he's chiselled, he's great, but he's got something, he's got beady eyes. Mm. He's good. I like him. I like him. That was a compliment, by the way. <laughs> he's very handsome. I mean, he's comedically handsome. He's not imposing. He's not, he's not bland. He's, um, why are we going on about how good looking Steve Carell is? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what am I, chop liver? <laughs>
then the worst thing that happens to you is a bit of bad service. Obesity is a disease. <laughs> no, it's not, is it? <laughs> you just like eating, don't you? <laughs> you know, you wake up in the morning and you find out that a country has sunk, um, but the milkman didn't deliver your yoghurt. You go, ah, oh, told him three times. The news can be on in the background. They go, that's the end of China. You're going, is that, is that the dairy? Yeah, I, um, turn that down. Um, I, yeah, I wanted two yogurts. Okay, well, tomorrow, yeah, cheers. I know it's sunk, but that doesn't affect you. Don't, don't tell me you knew China was sinking, that's why you didn't live my fucking yogurt. Get the yogurt round here now, twat. I can't laugh at someone I don't like. You know, Hitler had some great lines. Didn't make me laugh. It's all that other shit he did. <laughs> Put me off him. Old Adolf. That name's died out, hasn't it? I think the best observational comedy is not saying um, something that everyone's already thinking. It's saying something they weren't thinking until you said it. Aeroplane seats. <laughs> they're not big enough for someone like me. No, they're not. Because if they were, we'd only get 12 fucking people on the plane. Comedy is most importantly about empathy. I think that you can... You know, I think you're right about what you know. And I think if you understand it and you've lived through it and it's anecdotal, then there's enough people in the world to go, ah, oh, that happened to me. Paparazzi got me in Los Angeles and I was just sort of standing like that. And it was in the Daily Mail and the News of the World and they put a question underneath it, is Ricky pregnant? <laughs> you've got to be at least one step ahead of them. Um, and that's why I make it more anecdotal and a lot more, it's more storytelling and flights of fancy than gags. Because I think gags, you know, you laugh for an hour, but you don't remember one of them. And it's like a, a reflex action. It doesn't resonate. Whereas hopefully people will remember the stories. Uh, uh, storytelling is everything. If your surname is Dumpty, <laughs> don't call your firstborn Humpty. I, I must say that all my influences are American. Um, so it's not such a surprise to me that Americans get it. And I think people say, oh, you know, they've got a different sense of humour. I don't think that's true. I think we all laugh at the, the same things. If we understand it, we laugh at the same stuff. We're all the same. That's a big can, isn't it? I'm not showing off. I want you to know that is a big can and I'm not a dwarf. From the... Growing up, I liked people like, um, uh, you know, Groucho Marx and, um, uh, and Bob Hope. Oh, here comes the chubby funster. People I love most are uh, um, people like Laurel and Hardy. They have the relationship. It's all about empathy. They're precarious. They're in trouble. I want to hug them. That's what I'm talking about liking them. I love them. You know, everything they do is, is, is not just funny, it's sweet. Um, Christopher Guest has got it. Biggest single influence on my performance, probably. Spinal Tap, uh, direct influence on The Office. I was jogging once, right, with my iPod on. Yeah, looking good, right? Paparazzi got me, full page in the paper the next day, with a headline, I podge. <laughs> For me, what's important about things like that is that you can be a fool, you can say awful things, but it's all about character. And if someone's got the your best intentions, are, you can't be annoyed at them. I've just got this new house in London, and the neighbours were coming round, going, oh, yeah, hi, poking their noses in, basically. But I thought, you know, I'd be nice to them for now. When I get a big gate, they can fuck off. People ask me to pinpoint the difference between English and American humour, and I can't. I mean, I, I, mean, I think people are, are the same. There's my firstborn. <laughs> whacking away like a little monkey. I'd say if there was one difference, um, I think America appreciates winners more than, than we do. We, uh, we love losers. We, um, we like the underdog. And we promote them, but then as soon as they're a winner, we don't like them anymore. People say, oh, we should never go at Stephen Hawking. Oh, he's a genius. He's not a genius, he's pretentious. <laughs> Born in Oxford and talks with that fake American accent. Americans aren't as punctual. They say 7.30, they turn up, they'd be on about 20 to 8. No. If I say 7.30, I mean 7.30, OK? I want to put on the ticket, tardiness will not be tolerated. <laughs> Fuck it. 
My friends came to see me at the gig. They left the auditorium and they, they were queuing up for the toilet and they called me and they said, should we come backstage? I went, no, I'm at home. <laughs> I, I'm, I'll tell you what, I'm at home, well, in the UK, I'm at home and in my, my pyjamas by about 9.30. Woohoo! Particularly these, because these, these are very old pyjamas and there's holes in them. So Hold there's them. no restrictions. It, oh. every, anything just, it just hangs out. It lounges. It lounges next to me. Yeah. We're like, a, we're like a big and a small little lizard watching telly. What the fuck am I talking about? If you saw me naked, you wouldn't go, that's the tiniest cock I've ever seen. You fucking wouldn't. You wouldn't make... You'd, You'd look, you'd go, oh, he's a man, naked man. You, know, well, you wouldn't have to squint. I don't know why I did that. I don't, I don't know why I did that. I, you wouldn't have to squint. You'd go, there's his penis, it's fine. <laughs> Thank you very much. You've been fantastic. Cheers. Thank you. Because I would love to try stand-up. I'd love to do stand-up. I, I think it'd be it. good. I think it'd be good. You say that, but I, when I try and write a joke, I get, I get the opening bit. I say, that's a funny idea. Madonna's got divorced. And then I think, yeah. Where's my writers? You know, I don't, well, yeah, I don't. <laughs> I never knew you were this weird. Really? Because <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you kept it. You, we were yeah. working together for a couple of days. And you, I know. You're absolutely mental. <laughs> In a, in a nice way? Yeah! Yeah, yeah. But the, so... If you do win an award tonight, don't use it as a, a platform to make a political speech, right? You're in no position to lecture the public about anything. You know nothing about the real world. Most of you spent less time in school than Greta Thunberg. So, if you win, right, come up, accept your little award, thank your agent and your god, and... So... Oh, oh no, no funny business. There you go. <laughs> not on this show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's a joke. That's a joke. <laughs> what are you wearing? I love it. <laughs> 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 you turned up in a grey. Something they wouldn't even have in TK Maxx. Look at it. <laughs> How much time do you spend in London? I know you got a house here. How much time do you spend here? How much time do you spend in London? Well, between the two, probably a bit more in London, but you know, I, London, I, yeah, yeah, I like I like to come here as often as I can. Aren't the taxes bloody awful in London? <laughs> um, in England, isn't it just crazy? Well, I'm like you. I like paying tax because it's giving something <laughs> back. <laughs> yeah. Stop all the signs say, chill, bro. Sorry, 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 uh, sorry, sorry. Um, so, yeah, you're not, you're, you're, not, still... you're not giving them, you know, they come out, <laughs> they, they park their cars, they've got babies that they haven't paid, why would you? That'd be mental. But, <laughs> but if I was you, I'd be going, thank you so much to these people, and giving them, you know what I mean? A new series of extras starts yeah. this week. Uh, congratulations on, well, on getting a second series, essentially, but also, congratulations on already fucking it up. It's next week, you moron. <laughs> It was shoddy. It was, um, I mean, you, you know, you, di you didn't write it, and that's... But, do it like... But... Do it like it's your own. Do it like you were clever enough to come up with this joke yourself. Okay? <laughs> For everybody, you went to the Achilles heel of everybody. Like, when you tell a woman who's, you know, that... Her, that it's you know she looks old. That just hits a woman deep it's, in the. Wait, wait, let's see, let's say that too. I think you said something about the Sex in the City women, like about. I said it was airbrushed, and I said, I said we now we know how old you are, girls. I saw one of you in a in an episode of Bonanza. Okay. Right? <laughs> but, but, no, I was saying, why lie? There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with being 50 or looking 50. But you're not a woman. I don't, yeah, but, but, and I, I get you. But I don't think you lose your sexuality at 50. Our next presenter is the star of the hilarious comedy The Martian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I nearly died. Right. 
He's also the only person who Ben Affleck hasn't been unfaithful to. Please welcome Matt Damon. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I do look a bit more like Parker these days. I don't know. That's the problem. You're you getting me confused. <laughs> He's left yeah. himself in trim. Look at you. <laughs> Undo the button. Go on, let it hang out. Look at this. Look There's at this. Nothing no, there. there's no. nothing right. there. Fucking right. no. let it go. What? Look at that. What? What? I've, I've only I've only got a day to live. I said, what do you want to do? <laughs> and then and then when that didn't happen, why is it? And then when that didn't happen, make a wish foundation. No, I'd like to go on Jimmy Fallon, please. <laughs> And so, yeah, that's not what you said. No. No, no I didn't. You, yeah, you want to do something else. And then I said anything but Jimmy, Jimmy Fallon. Fallon. Yeah. I mean, you always work together. Do you ever go on holiday together? Fuck off! <laughs> Jesus Christ! Can you imagine that? Oh, it would be horrible. Just think of the pictures. Me looking pretty cool and sort of tanned. Buff. Now and buff. buff, yeah. Buff. And the thing, naked, he looks like one of those baby fish. You can actually see through his body. <laughs> You're one of about five people that have been invited round my house. I'm a very sort of private person, apart from, like, you know, workmen and postmen. Um, and, uh... You make me feel special. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've had Alan Carr, a postman round here. <laughs> Refuse uh, collector. Yeah, well, they, at least they're useful. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, uh... I can't believe this. Uh, you, you had a birthday, and is it 50 years old? You're not 50 years yeah. old. Are you really 50, 50 years old? 50. 50, yeah. I mean, you look tremendous. You look like you're 35. If somebody had said to me, uh, how old? I said 35. A 35, honestly. You look exactly like you did the first time, except you're in better shape. Remember you used to come out in your sort of pear shape when you come out? <laughs> now you look great. <laughs> you look you, look you didn't good. say that at the time, though, did no, you? No, I didn't know what. To, I didn't know what to think. Well, no, you said oh, you look good now because I looked awful before. That's all you're saying. <laughs> I needed you to say it before. You go, you're pear shaped. I'd have worked out faster. No. But now, <laughs> but but how how do you feel at fifty? Good, right? Well, yeah. I'm grumpier. I think I'm grumpier. Grumpier. Yeah, yeah. I understand you a lot more now. If it, do you know what I mean? No. say about our next two presenters. The first is an actor, producer, writer and director whose movies have grossed over three and a half billion dollars at the box office. He's won two Academy Awards and three Golden Globes for his powerful and varied performances starring in such films as Philadelphia, Forrest Gump, Castaway, Apollo 13 and Saving Private Ryan. The other it's Tim Allen. <laughs> well, you know, like, like many of you, we recall back when Ricky Gervais was a slightly chubby but very kind co comedian. Yeah. <laughs> Neither of which is he now. Mainly Star Trek memorabilia, because I love Star Trek. <laughs> Such a nerd. <laughs> have, you never been, have you never been in a Star Trek? No, I've never been in a Star Trek, but I love the original series, so I have. Oh, okay. Like, I have the Gorn head from the original series from the episode Arena where. Like, they know what? I know, I'm just. I'm just nodding. Oh, the Gorn head. Oh, I am. <laughs> <laughs> the Gorn head. Okay. I have. <laughs> I have. <laughs> what the f is a Gorn head? <laughs> Uh, every time you're on the program, I try to do this, and it always comes out very clumsy. Let me try it one more time. Possibly the best television show ever. What do you think? Oh, uh, possibly. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> what have you named your private parts? <laughs> um... <laughs> Pamela. <laughs> Our next presenter is the Queen of Pop. Not you, Alton. Sit down. This is... She's all woman. I'll give you some clues. She's always Vogue. 
She's a material girl, and she's just like a virgin. Please welcome Madonna. If I'm still just like a virgin, Ricky, then why don't you come over here and do something about it? I haven't kissed a girl in a few years. On TV. On a serious note, just looking at all the faces, here it reminds me of some of the great work that's been done this year by cosmetic surgeons. Um, <laughs> it is an honour to be here um, in a room full of what I consider to be the most important people on the planet. Actors. They're just, they're just better than ordinary people, aren't they? That's, no, they're, 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 we all know that. Um, <laughs> Imagine a world without actors. Oh, God, it doesn't bear thinking about it. Imagine if they ever went on strike. Oh, what would we do? You couldn't replace them. You couldn't replace them with any other profession, lawyers or doctors. Can you imagine a real surgeon doing what Hugh Laurie does in-house? It would be pathetic. <laughs> He'd be all over the place. We'd go, oh, where do I stand? How's my American accent? What, what's my lines? You know, Hugh, with the aid of coaches and stuff, can eventually learn his lines while saving lives. He's a genius. <laughs> How could you replace Kiefer Sutherland in 24? I'd love to see a real anti-terrorist agent try and defuse a bomb in a busy train station in one hour. <laughs> Some of those scenes, by the way, where Kiefer grabs someone and beats them to a pulp, they weren't even in the script. Um, <laughs> the director just said, keep rolling, we'll work it into the... <laughs> but actors aren't just loved here in Hollywood, they are loved the world over because they're recognizable you can be anywhere you could be in the third world okay and you get a glimpse of a hollywood star and it makes you feel better okay you could be a little a little child a little asian child with no possessions and no money but you get a you see a picture of angelina jolie and you think oh, mummy <laughs> but as i say i'm going to be nice tonight i've changed not as much as Bruce Jenner, obviously. <laughs> now Caitlyn Jenner, of course. What a year she's had. She became a role model for trans people everywhere, showing great bravery in breaking down barriers and destroying stereotypes. She didn't do a lot for women drivers, but... <laughs> Mainly Star Trek memorabilia, because I love Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> No, I've never been in a Star Trek, but I love the original series, so I have, oh, okay. like, I have the Gorn head from the original series from the episode Arena, where... Like, they know what I know, I'm just, I'm like, I'm just nodding. Oh, the Gorn head? Oh, I am. Yeah. Yeah. The Gorn head? Okay. I have... <laughs> I have... <laughs> what the f*** is a Gorn head? What channel are we on now? What is this again? Where are you now? Well, if it depends, uh, what uh, uh, medium you're using. Yeah. Uh, Direct TV would be, uh, 247. 247. 247. <laughs> who, who finds it? They must... They, they, they're definitely... They're definitely looking for porn, if they find it. <laughs> de there's no way you go through that. And then, but when they get here, they go, oh, this will do, I'm too tired anyway. I just... <laughs> It wasn't the only epic movie. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, nearly three hours long, Leonardo DiCaprio attended the premiere, and by the end, his date was too old for him. So... <laughs> Even Prince Andrew's like, come on, Leo, mate, you know. <laughs> you're nearly 50, son. Other celebrity scandal. Justin Bieber nearly had to take a paternity test. <laughs> What a waste of a test that would have been. <laughs> no, he's not the father. The only way that he could have impregnated a girl was if he'd borrowed one of Martha Stewart's old turkey basters. <laughs> Open wide. Um, the town in Minnesota has cancelled plans to change the name of a street called Stoner Avenue. <laughs> it's a weird street. And instead of saying stop, all the signs say, chill, bro. <laughs> Sorry, 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 uh, sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, you're not, you're, you're, not, still... you're not giving them, you know, they come out. 
They've, they've parked their cars, they've got babies that they haven't paid. Why would you? That'd be mental. <laughs> but, but if I was you, I'd be going, thank you so much to these people and giving them, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was, I'm not doing that. It was shoddy. It was, um, I mean, you, you know, you, did, you didn't write it and that's... But, do it like... <laughs> but... Do it like it's your own. Do it like you were clever enough to come up with this joke yourself. <laughs> OK? <laughs> On a serious note, just looking at all the faces here reminds me of some of the great work that's been done this year by cosmetic surgeons. Um, <laughs> you all look great. I've had a little bit of work done. I've had cheek implants. Uh, they put them there, which is annoying. <laughs> Apple roared into the... The TV game with a morning show, a superb drama, yeah. A superb drama about the importance of dignity and doing the right thing, made by a company that runs sweatshops in China. So, I haven't offended anyone. I didn't mean, it's not my fault. It's a lot of powerful people here, so if I said, it's... <laughs> Honestly, I like a drink as much as the next man. Unless the next man... It's Mel Gibson. <laughs> Why didn't you episodes. do more than 12 episodes? Because I was tired. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need it. Tired? <laughs> I need to lie down. I, get, I got the attention span of a toddler. I can't believe you've done this show this long. I can't believe it. I can't believe it either. I can tell your heart's not in it anymore. No, but my, I, so I, I don't. I can't <laughs> <it. laughs> no, care less anymore. Martin Scorsese, the greatest living director, made the news for his controversial comments about the Marvel franchise. He said they're not real cinema and uh, they remind him of theme parks. I agree. Although I don't know what he's doing hanging around theme parks. He's not big enough to go on the rides, is he? <laughs> it's tiny. The Golden Globes is shown all over the world. It is oblivious to colour or creed. It doesn't just celebrate talent, it celebrates difference. It crushes prejudice and stereotype. One stereotype I hate is that all Irishmen are just drunk, sweary hellraisers. Please welcome Colin Farrell. I never knew you were this weird. Really? <laughs> Because you, you kept it. You, we we yeah. worked together for a couple of days. And did, I know. You're absolutely mental. <laughs> in a, in a nice way. Yeah. 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 But uh, so. <laughs> Lots of big celebrities here tonight. I mean, legends, icons. Yeah. Look at this table alone. Uh, Al Pacino, Robert De Niro. But. Baby Yoda. Uh, oh, that's, that's Joe Pesci, sorry. Um, I love you, man. Don't have me whacked. You probably know me as the creator of The Office. <laughs> no, you don't, do you? You think Steve Carell did it all? Oh, he's brilliant, isn't he, Steve Carell? <laughs> he's amazing as the bumbling office manager. Where does he get his ideas from? <laughs> Let's pay... <laughs> to a lot of award ceremonies. Um, <laughs> here. Um, and someone always gets up and says, oh, oh, I haven't prepared a speech. I didn't think I would win. Well, I knew I'd won. <laughs> and I didn't prepare a speech. That shows you the contempt I have for this award and this town in general. Um, you look pumped, buffed, and cut. <laughs> you, I mean, you, you are ready to go. Thank you. When, when did this happen, for God's sakes? Um, it's been a gradual process. Yeah. Well, what over, is your goal? Over uh, 50 years. Uh-huh. Started off really small. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, what's what the big... matter with your voice? Oh, I've got a sore throat. Ah. So that's, that's it. How long have you had the sore throat? Just a couple of days. See, now, I had a sore throat and, uh, uh, around the holidays. It's all and about I just... you, isn't it? It's all about uh, you. It... <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence made the news when she demanded equal pay for women in Hollywood and she received, yeah, overwhelming support from people everywhere. There were marches on the street with nurses and factory workers saying, how the hell can a 25-year-old live on 52 million? This is... With, there were plumbers around the world going, poor girl in town, we're lucky now. So... Here. 
You see what I'm doing there? Yeah. Hey, you try it. No, I can't. Come on. It's the only... This will get rid this, of... This... Uh, sorry. Huh? What? How is this not a breakdown? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Are you going to... Are you going to... I'm trying to help you. That's amazing. Available for streaming. I've never seen you so animated. Yeah. That was amazing. Thank you. On it's, Netflix. I uh, thought you were giving up. Okay. <laughs> no, this is, this is, no. No, I, I honestly just thought you were seeing this out, waiting, biding the time out. I was well, thinking you, of I wouldn't be long till I was there. Oh, and yeah. now. Well, that, you, you think maybe I should. Maybe, no, huh? you've got a second win. To go oh. for it. Why would you. <laughs> but actors aren't just loved here in Hollywood, they are loved the world over because they're recognizable. You can be anywhere. You could be in the third world. Okay, and you get a glimpse of a Hollywood star, and it makes you feel better. Okay, you could be a little, a little child, a little Asian child with no possessions and no money, but you get a, you see a picture of Angelina Jolie, and you think, oh, Mummy. <laughs> You're 65 this Thursday, aren't you? That's correct. Yes. You can't use this till Thursday. This is official. I got you a bus pass and senior citizens. <laughs> It's a metro card. There it is. <laughs> so, yeah. No. I want to say something nice about Mal before he comes out. Um, so. Oh, yeah. Okay. Here you go. I'd rather have a drink with him in his hotel room tonight than with Bill Cosby. Please, Malcolm. Mal Gibson. Ricky Gervais has a new game show here on ABC called Child Support, and he really wanted to be here to promote it in person, but he's very busy not being here to promote it in person. So he, he made a video, he sent a video, and I don't know exactly what the nature of the video is. Yeah, hi, Jimmy. Um, sorry I'm not there in person, but, you know, um, I can't be bothered. <laughs> to be honest. But I've seen the show, I get the gist of it. How could you replace Kiefer Sutherland in 24? I'd love to see a real anti-terrorist agent try and defuse a bomb in a busy train station in one hour. <laughs> Some of those scenes, by the way, where Kiefer grabs someone and beats them to a pulp, they weren't even in the script. Um, <laughs> the director just said, keep rolling, we'll work it into the... Welcome to the 68th Annual Golden Globe Awards, live from the Beverly Hilton Hotel in Los Angeles. It's going to be a night of partying and heavy drinking. <laughs> or as Charlie Sheen calls it, breakfast. <laughs> wow. Whoa. So, let's get this straight. What he did was, he, uh, he picked up a porn star, um, paid her to have dinner with him, uh, introduced her to his ex-wife, as you do, uh, <laughs> Uh, went to a hotel, uh, got, got drunk, got naked, trashed the place while she was locked in a cupboard. And uh, <laughs> that was a Monday. What, what did he do New Year's Eve? <laughs> anyway, welcome. The Golden Globes is a celebration of the best in TV and movies over the last year, voted for by the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. It was a big year for 3D movies, Toy Story, Despicable Me, Tron. Seems like everything this year was three-dimensional. Except the characters in The Tourist. Um, I, 
I feel bad about that joke. I, no, no, I'll tell you why. I'm jumping on the bandwagon, because I haven't even seen the tourist. Who has? Um, but, no, it must be good, because it's nominated. So shut up, OK? And I'd like to quash this ridiculous rumour going round that the only reason the tourist was nominated was so the Hollywood Foreign Press could hang out with Johnny Depp and Angelina Jolie. That is, that is rubbish. That is not the only reason. They also accepted bribes. Let's... No. All that happened was some of them were taken to see Cher in concert. How the hell is that a bribe? Really? Do you want to go and see Cher? No. Why not? Because it's not 1975. <laughs> There were a lot of big films that didn't get nominated this year. Nothing for Sex in the City 2. Um, no, I was sure the Golden Globe for special effects would go to the team that airbrushed that poster. Um, well, great job. Girls, we know how old you are. I saw one of you in an episode of Bonanza. Also not nominated, I love you, Philip Morris, um, Jim, Jim Carrey and Ewan McGregor, two heterosexual actors pretending to be gay. So the complete opposite of some famous Scientologist then. Um, well, well, probably. My lawyers helped me with the wording of that joke. They're not here. Okay. <laughs> There's been some great new TV drama this year, like Boardwalk Empire and The Walking Dead. So, uh, yeah. Talking of The Walking Dead, congratulations to Hugh Hefner, who, uh, who's getting married at the age of 84 to 24-year-old beauty, Crystal Harris. Um, when she was asked why she was marrying him, she said because he lied about his age. He told me he was 94. Oh, come on. Um, don't worry. Hold out and just, just don't look at it when you touch it. That's done. <laughs> I warned him. Um, one of the biggest events in TV this year was the finale of Lost, one of my favourites, and uh, all the questions were answered, yeah. Um, I have to say, though, it was quite a complicated finale. I'm not sure I totally understood it all, but from what I can make out, I'm pretty sure the fat one ate them all. Uh, I, I think... Should we get on with it? Our first presenter is beautiful, talented, and Jewish, apparently. Mal Gibson told me that. He's obsessed. Um, please welcome Scarlett Johansson. You know our next presenter from such films as Hudson Hawk, Look Who's Talking, Mercury Rising, Colour of Night, Fifth Element, uh, Heart's War. Please welcome Ashton Kutcher's dad, Bruce Willis. Sometimes Hollywood does, uh, Hollywood does provide you with outrageous fortune. Next up. Eva Longoria has the daunting task of introducing the president of the Hollywood Foreign Press. That's nothing. I just had to help him off the toilet and pop his teeth in. Um, it was messy. Please welcome Eva Longoria. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the president of the Hollywood Foreign Press, Philip Burke.
Thank you, Eva. And Ricky, next time you want me to help you qualify your movies, go to another guy. All right. I love this next presenter. He's so cool. Um, he's the star of Iron Man. Two girls and a guy. Wonder Boys. Sorry, these porn films. What? <laughs> kiss, kiss, bang, bang. <laughs> Bowfinger. Really? Yeah. Up the Academy. Come on. He has done all those films, but many of you in this room probably know him best from such facilities as the Betty Ford Clinic and Los Angeles County Jail. Please welcome Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> Aside from the fact uh, that it's been hugely mean-spirited with mildly sinister undertones, I'd say the vibe of the show is pretty good so far, wouldn't you? <laughs> I, uh, I consider myself a veteran of sorts, and I've made uh, somewhat of a study of this. Uh, tell me if I'm wrong. I don't know if an actress can do her best work until I've slept with her. Julianne. <laughs> Told her that I was working with strange new feelings that were confusing me, Angie. <laughs> Only to have her blow me off halfway through the shoot like it never happened, Annette. <laughs> or casually mention that her boyfriend is coming for a location visit because he misses her and what they have is real then have the gall to invite me to join them at a three-top for dinner, Anne? Why? Now, I'm not trying to creep anyone out, but where's Emma? I, I think I got something for us. It's kind of like a blue Valentine thing, but not age-appropriate. Now, I'm not saying that my theory doesn't hold water, but somehow all of these women rendered exquisite performances without a shred of help from me, so I guess I'm just saying, if I could, I'd give it to all five of you. <laughs> no. At once. The award. Right here, center stage, in front of my wife, the audience, and millions of viewers. Our next presenters are two of the funniest people in America. She stole the show on Saturday Night Live, then went on to create, write, and star in her own show, 30 Rock. He was a jobbing actor, career not going that well, if I'm being totally honest, who, who got his big break when I cast him in a remake of a show that I created called The Office. He's now leaving that show and killing a cash cow for both of us. Please welcome the wonderful Tina Fey and the ungrateful Steve Carell! <laughs> I love it! Never gets old. Tonight, we stand before you not as Golden Globe Award winners, but as writers. Don't turn the channel. We're still stars. But as stars who are also writers, it gives us great pleasure to honor the nominees for Best Screenplay. Screenplays we could have written if we had had time. <laughs> like the one about the mountain climber. I would have given my right arm to have written that. <laughs> There's a story of a couple of lesbians. It's the lesbian couple. Ah. There's a long complicated sci-fi thriller starring Leonardo DiCaprio, not unlike my dreams. Mine as well. There's also the story of Britain's King George V.I. The Sixth. V.I. The Sixth. And finally, the true life story of social networking and how it ruined our ability to interact one-on-one. -on -one. I heard about that movie on Facebook from a friend I never met.
Welcome back. Now, our next presenters are young and thin, with the hair and teeth. They're lovely to look at, which is just as well, because they're presenting the award for Best Foreign Language Film, a category that no one in America cares about. Please welcome Olivia Wilde and Robert Pattinson. Jeremy Irons. Here are the nominees for Best Supporting Actress in a Motion Picture. OK. What can I say about our next two presenters? The first is an actor, producer, writer and director whose movies have grossed over three and a half billion dollars at the box office. He's won two Academy Awards and three Golden Globes for his powerful and varied performances, starring in such films as Philadelphia, Forrest Gump, Castaway, Apollo 13 and Saving Private Ryan. The other is Tim Allen. Well, you know, like, like many of you, we recall back when Ricky Gervais was a slightly chubby but very kind co comedian. Yeah. Neither of which is he now. Hello, and welcome back. The next presenter is a national treasure, Miss Congeniality herself. This down-to-earth girl next door first stole our hearts as a bus driver and then as a railway fare collector. Now, of course, she wouldn't be seen dead on public transport, because as she just said to me backstage, poor people are gross and they smell bad. Please welcome Sandra Bullock. Thank you very much. That's about it. Um, well done. Justice there. Thanks, everyone in the room, for being good sports. Thanks to NBC. Thanks to the Hollywood Foreign Press. Um, thank you for watching at home. And thank you to God for making me an atheist. Thank you. Uh, I want to say last night I watched the Golden Globes. I was offended by Ricky Gervais. <laughs> I was offended that a comedian could be that funny at an award show. Ricky was hilarious. Uh, and I hope you had a nice weekend. Otherwise, I watch a, a little bit of football as well. Mary? Hey. Just, just, just a little bit. I asked you to be ready when I got back. Well, I'm. Have you even moved since I left this morning? Yes, of course. What are you talking about? I, I got up. I got up to tip room service. Have you just oh, retired, and this is what you're going to do for the rest of your life, and you're never going to work again? Of course, I'm going to work again. When? I don't know. You're, I, you're I in the prime of your life. Are you just going to? Uh, no, I'm. Mm. I'm going to work when something comes up that I want to do. I would really like for you to get dressed, so we can go look at this house. Fine. Fine. Thank you. All right. Here's Brittany. Brittany, come on out. Look at that girl come out. Look. Look at her. You don't know me. You don't know me. Yeah, you all know. Fuck yourself. That's right. Yeah. Come on. That's right. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. No, yeah, fuck you. Fuck you. No, fuck you. I think you've managed to do it twice um, with Seinfeld and Kirby Enthusiasm. Is to do that thing that so many comedians, stand-up comedians, fail at is getting real-life observations that they've had and rendering it with with actors and not making it look contrived. You know, you, you know what I mean? Usually um, a stand-up comedian gets his pilot and he, he just crowbars in. Just, and it just looks like he might as well be talking to the camera. And then you want to go, well, it's good, but I know where you're going wrong. Because he's doing all this stuff from his act. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Right. And, and I see these comedians yeah. on chat yeah. shows where yeah. when someone said, uh, they say things like, so, yeah. did you come on your bike, Larry? Oh, don't talk about bicycles. <laughs> oh, bicycles, schmicycles, listen. Oh. And it's just... Uh, I know, I know. 
this is crowbarring stuff in, you know, when you, when you work somewhere, it's crowbarring stuff in, but it's making it look like you're not. And that's why I think naturalism is so, is so big and high on the agenda now in comedy. You're a stickler as, as I am for, um, for reality. When something takes you out of that reality, and it takes you completely out of the scene, don't you yeah. think? Yeah, I want to see someone get their hands dirty. I want to see a bit of their life. Yeah, also, um, I, I was never a big um, joke guy. No. You know, because, I mean, that's, that's the one thing about so many shows is that everybody's saying all these funny things, right? The audience is laughing. Yeah. But nobody else is laughing. They're, exactly. They're saying jokes to their friends. Yeah. And, and then the friend doesn't even smile. Absolutely. And then the friend says something else equally as funny. Like everybody always has to say something funny. I remember the first time I saw that reversed was, uh, I think it's, is it Play It Again, Sam, when um, Woody Allen gets beaten up when he goes home and he starts making uh, Diane laugh. You got into a fight? Yeah. With who? Some guys were getting tough with Julia. I had to teach him a lesson. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I I snapped my chin down onto some guy's fist and hit another one in the knee with my nose. Where's Julie? Oh, she ran off with the leader. I think they're getting married. They're heading for Mexico now. I never would have worked between Julie and me because she's Protestant and I'm Catholic and there's a great religious abyss between my... Listen, who were these guys? Oh, they said they were uh, hairdressers. I, uh, hard to believe, though. Yeah. I think I, you, want, you want us to call a doctor? Yes. No, no, I'm fine. I, I, I could use a, a three-foot Band-Aid. <laughs> pain subsides. She's laughing and my sex life is turning into the petrified forest. <laughs> very funny. You know what? You're very good at it, too. I've noticed the way, uh, you know, I know it's a show and everything, and I'm, I'm, t I'm serious. Listen, this is yeah. that, listen to it. What yeah. he's, whatever he says <laughs> is the truth. This is I the don't truth. know what he's going to say. Because he is one of the few people who actually has genuine laughter you have laughter on on your show and you laughed and i and i when i watch it i go wow it's great it's great the way you did that yeah well it's it's nice you know i i just i just think realism resonates more you can do you can you can go mad you can go you can go surreal you can you can go fast but as long as there's an element of realism and recognition it's I did a, 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 an interview when they were asking me my favourite um, things and lists and stuff, and I put George Costanza as the best uh, sitcom character of all time. Why did you not play him? It was never even a consideration. Really? It was, it was nothing that I even thought of or Jerry thought of or anybody brought up. It wasn't even on the table. I couldn't have done that and, uh, and written it, the show at the same time. It just would, it would be too hard. I couldn't do it. And so this is the, the, the thing when uh, George finally gets to start writing for, uh, you know, the, the pilot. And um, right. he sees two girls and he thinks, well, now I can impress the ladies. Yeah. People go, that's the top of the tree. Don't waste your time with novels, right. plays, sitcoms where it's at. That's the top yes, of the tree yeah, exactly, in terms yeah. of artistry. Is there anything you want to do in television outside comedy? Would you want to do a drama or a film? Or oh, no, no. I would be completely lost, completely out of my element. It would be laughable. It really? Would really? It would really be laughable, yeah. I couldn't do it. I, I would have no barometer for knowing that it's good. How would I know it's any good? Well, when, the... when, No, you, I wouldn't know. There's nothing... There's no guides. Well, there's know? good drama. There is. And but, there's bad drama. Right, so... but people who are dramatists know when it's good. I'm, I wouldn't know if it was good or not. But how did you know you knew it was good when you started writing comedy? If not, there was good comedy and bad comedy. If people laughed. You know people were laughing at this comedy club where people were going, what the fuck? <laughs> it's that thing. You, I go to one of those comedy clubs and people go there and go, uh, anyone here smoke? Any put smoke weed? <laughs> Get the munchies, don't you? What they should do. That, and I, I'm, I, I'm looking round at people and they're going, yeah, you do get the munchies! You get the munchies! I'm, they're bursting. I haven't heard this stuff before. It's a, I know, it's unbelievable. I think, well, it? yeah. you're all idiots. Yeah. They're just, oh, forget it then. If you're, if you're saying what everyone's thinking, you're not doing anything. Yeah, there's a fine line there, because you, you don't know. Are people laughing because they thought of it, or because they thought of it and now they're hearing it? Or... Well, I think comedy has to be recognition, but uh, it's absolutely pointless doing uh, comedy to a room full of people that could just about do it themselves. What I want to do is I, I want to do things that nobody else can think of. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. You wanna, you wanna, that's, that's what you want to do. 
you know, so many times when I'm watching your shows, I'm, I'm going, I wish I would have thought of that. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? <clears throat> I suppose that I want the right laugh. I, I want to look right around. Laugh. Yeah. I want to look around and go, right, yeah. they're not laughing. That's a good sign. Yeah. That's good. I didn't want them to laugh. <laughs> right. I don't want you to like, I don't want you liking my comedy. Well, I had, I had plenty of that when I was doing stand-up. I heard a rumour that sometimes you'd go out and you'd look at the audience and go, nah. Yeah, I did that, I did that once, yeah. And um, was that heartfelt? That oh, wasn't totally. a gimmick? That, that wasn't was a thought, gimmick. You looked I, I out. got up on stage, I looked out at the audience. <laughs> I kind of took them in, I looked around. <laughs> what, they like? what, what was the demographic that said to you, they're not going to like this just, stuff? Just people I sensed no connection with. Yeah. <laughs> nobody I ever wanted to sit down with and talk yeah. to. I didn't want to be talking to, I could tell on first sight. You know, my, my um... Hen parties and yeah. bachelor parties. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> exactly. The warm-up guy yeah. throws stuff out and shows his ass. Right, yeah. yes, yes, Brilliant. yeah, right. And I looked out and I went, mm, no, yeah. <laughs>